Welcome back to the Sound for More Channel 8's Leo speaking. Today we continue the journey in learning how to use uh, actions inside uh, Loopy Pro and we are going to focus on quantization. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel and bringing more tutorials to you. Thank you very much. Okay, so if you followed the previous tutorial, you will have uh, what uh, you see now on the screen, a simple button and a clip. And when I click on the button, it will uh, trigger the clip and also the clock. Now, at the moment you have the um, clock running, you can see it is running here and uh, it is in play mode here. And of course we are in standalone version, not inside a host like AUM. And then you also see here these uh, a little line here which is going around the loop it tells you where it is in terms of positioning so if I click stop that will disappear in terms of quantization when you when you actually uh, click on play okay so if I click play first of all you see and um, it's starting to move in terms of position where it is on the loop it, when I press on the button and I trigger the play of that clip, it checks in which position it is and then it waits for quantization settings. In this case, the default is loop, so it will start the play when the loop commence. Similar, when you click again to stop uh, the play of that clip, it checks where it is. And then, of course, it waits uh, for the loop uh, quantization or synchronization to actually stop. So let's try. So if I wait for this to come here and I click start there, it waits for this time up here to, for loop. Do we hear? So I've done it roughly here and it waited for um, quantization at the beginning of the loop before stopping. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's go back in edit mode and let's edit that button again and let's um, select that action. So we already seen the target, we already seen the action, in this case the action to toggle play and stop a specific clip which is this drum loop which we already selected. Okay. Now, we have uh, an option for quantization, as you can see here. So if you click on it, you have, first of all, a setting which says use default settings. In this case, it is not overriding the default setting for quantization when it actually clicks, uh, sorry, it action the play or stop of the loop. But if you disable that, then you have options here to specify quantization when the loop play or when it stops, okay? So at the moment it's set to loop. So if I leave that as it is, nothing really changes. So wait for quantization. Here. And it waits for this time for quantization, okay? So let's go back again to edit that particular action. Now, you notice instead of say default here, it says own, own, right? So if I enable here default setting, it says default for quantization. So you can quickly see that there are no changes here, but so disable that. Now we can say don't have quantization on play, but leave default quantization to loop for stopping, right? So what happens? So we, we exit here. If I press the play, it will start immediately. But if I stop, it still waits for quantization because uh, uh, and because that is how it is left set. And you can see it says yeah, none and own none here. So it starts immediately in terms of playing, but in terms of stopping, is is waiting for loop quantization. So it's waiting for the loop to to start before it stops. You have other settings, of course, you can go to master and master settings, and you can do it for both, of course. So you can have a also none for both, which means start and stop immediately. And you can say it starts and stop immediately, so you have no more quantization. And now if you edit that action, it says quantization none, none, okay? 
The beauty, of course, is that you can go custom. And if you select custom, then you can specify to the length of quantization. So you can go from 30 second notes, one bit, one bar, two bars, etc. So let's go excessive, eight bars. So it means that it will have to wait for eight bars before starting play. Okay, but it will stop immediately because there is no quantization on the loop stop. Let's exit. Now it is the clock is already running as you can see. So let's press somewhere there. You can see it's waiting now quite a long time. Okay, it's not respecting anymore the position on the loop here because it's waiting for eight bars. So it's a long time before it kicks in. But of course, the stopping will happen immediately, like so. Okay, so that is uh, how you can change the settings for quantization for a particular action. So it's very straightforward. And, uh, and of course, you can uh, go as wild as you like up to 32 bars. So you can, uh, um, of course, personalize as you like. Pay attention, of course, if you lose, if you use something like one bit, two bits, because they are very short, might not make a huge difference. But then again, it also depends on the bits per minute. So let's try to two bits. What I mean by bits per minute, bits per minute here. And of course, if you are using it inside a host, that will depend on the host tempo, right? So let's try two bit. So it's very quick, right? So, um, yeah, remember that in terms of uh, when you configure quantization specific to an action. So you can override it or not, and you can configure it, uh, customize it or not for play and stop in this case, because we are looking into, as I just showed you, the um, action for play and stopping a specific clip. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the short tutorial and as always, see you next time. Bye.